Well, this could be a total bombshell because people testified in that grand jury, a lot of different women, about what happened, what Epstein did, and who Epstein set them up with. Grand jury testimony from convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein's Florida case could soon become public. What could it possibly reveal? I'm Anjanette Levy, and welcome to Law & Crime Sidebar Podcast. There are still so many questions about convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and his ties to the rich and famous and his ties to sex trafficking around the world. Epstein died by suicide while awaiting trial on federal charges in New York in August of 2019. But before that, he pleaded guilty in 2008 to state charges in Florida of procuring a person under age 18 for prostitution and felony solicitation of prostitution. That guilty plea followed a 2006 Palm Beach County grand jury investigation where teenage girls testified Epstein paid them to give him massages. Critics have called that plea agreement a slap on the wrist, and the Palm Beach Post has sued to obtain the grand jury testimony. The paper won an appeal, with a judge writing that grand jury transcripts are secret, but there are exceptions to each rule. Joining me to discuss this development in the Jeffrey Epstein case is Nick Ackerman. He is a former Watergate prosecutor. Uh, Nick, your thoughts on this grand jury testimony becoming public? It sounds like it's going to happen. Well, this could be a total bombshell because people testified in that grand jury, a lot of different women, about what happened, what Epstein did, and who Epstein set them up with. And there are a lot of famous people uh, whose names may come out in the course of this thing. So we don't know what was said in these grand jury proceedings, you know, which individuals Uh, and friends of Epstein were fingered by these various women that testified. I mean, this is unusual in the sense that normally grand jury testimony is absolutely sacrosanct and secret. Uh, But under these circumstances, I could understand where the judge uh, might want to release it because Jeffrey Epstein is no longer among the living. Uh, There's a lot of questions about what happened Uh, in Florida in terms of why Epstein wasn't was dealt with so leniently. Mm -hmm. Uh, So when you put all those things in combination, um, I think there's a a big public interest in knowing what exactly is in those transcripts. And and that, I think, is going to be extremely, extremely interesting. I think it'll be really interesting, too. And, uh, you know, just the fact that the Palm Beach Post went to court, sued over this, They lost uh, their first fight. They won on appeal. You know, the judge basically said in in the decision, yes, grand jury testimony is secret, but there are exceptions to rules. Uh, So could we see more of this possibly in other cases in the future? Well, I I wouldn't necessarily extrapolate this to other cases, but certainly this is an unusual case. um, And I could see where a, a state court judge would order that. Now, don't forget There still could be an appeal. Uh, This could go to the Florida Supreme Court before we're finished. Mm -hmm. So it may not be over until it's over. So um, we'll just have to see where this goes next. Nick Ackerman, thank you so much as always for your time. Thank you. I also spoke with Jacob Shamsian. He is a correspondent for Insider and has covered Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, so I think this is a really fascinating uh, development. So as, as some of your listeners might uh, recall, before Jeffrey Epstein was arrested and uh, died in jail in 2019, he was the subject of, inv- of an investigation in Florida um, in around 2006, 2007. Um, and, and even though law enforcement identified around like you know several dozen, around 40, if I remember correctly, uh, possible victims of Jeffrey Epstein, they only brought one uh, one in front of a grand jury. They only brought the details about one in front of a grand jury, and Jeffrey Epstein famously, um, you know, got to just uh, plead guilty to a couple of charges and had to have this, like, a very light um, sentence where he just got to, like, basically, you know, hang around in, in jail on the weekends. Um, and so, you know, we, we don't really still have a good understanding of how that came together, and hopefully... By getting these grand jury records, we can we can understand like exactly what happened there, how this decision was made, um, and you know what what else did law enforcement have at the time? Do you expect to hear about any 
names, uh, big names, people that we know in these grand jury transcripts should uh, they be approved for release, which it sounds like could very well happen. Um, I mean, are we, are we expecting just a document dump or just portions? I mean, what, what do you think we'll get? It seems like, um, you know, it, the case specifically is the Palm Beach Post has been suing to, to get these records. As you, as you said, grand jury records are normally sealed and stay sealed. Um, but, you know, they've argued that this is like absolutely in the public interest and we should get them out there. In terms of, of names of other um, affiliates, I, you know, it's going to, I think, I think we'd have a hard time. Um, I'd have a hard time imagining getting information about um, like people who we don't already know about. Um, like there's no indication as far as, as far as I know that back in that 2006, 2007 investigation that, that Palm Beach police and the FBI were looking to charge anyone else. You know what I mean? Like it was like still focused on Jeffrey Epstein um, at that point. That said, obviously, like, you know, he was still enormously well connected at the time, um, you know, better connected than he was after, you know, that guilty plea where he become became still well connected, but a little bit ostracized, not as much as he should have been uh, from from some powerful people. So, uh, yeah, it will be it would be interesting to know more about what his circle looked like at that time. Well, we know for sure that Ghislaine Maxwell was in his circle at that time. Also, Sarah Kellen. She is somebody whose name came up repeatedly in Ghislaine Maxwell's trial. So do we think Sarah Kellen's name will come up in this? I mean, there were there were non kind of prosecution agreements with um, certain people, if I recall, from this particular case. Yeah, I do think that um, there's four uh, this four woman, uh, Sarah Kellen, if I remember correctly, being one of them, uh, would would come up um, in there, uh, as, as you noted, in the non-prosecution agreement that Jeffrey Epstein signed, allowed him to, to, to plead guilty to a minimal charge. Um, there were these four, you know, uh, women who were apparent, like co-conspirators, so to speak, um, who, you know, the, uh, prosecutors weren't allowed to go after. So, I, I would hope that, you know, the, this grand jury material would shed more light on exactly uh, what they were up to um, and, and their uh, relationship with, with the victims that the law enforcement identified. I feel like we're getting a constant drip, drip, drip. You know, as more time passes, more information comes out, more documents become available. I, I'm kind of wondering, um, if, is this case over? as far as other people in Jeffrey Epstein's orbit go. Uh, I keep coming back to this. Ghislaine Maxwell, when she was convicted and after the sentencing, the U.S. attorney didn't have a press conference. And they really talked a lot about Sarah Kellen, who's really denied any wrongdoing, but they've uh, talked a lot about her in the trial of Ghislaine Maxwell. And she was brought up quite a bit. So what do we think is going to be the end game here? Do we expect more? to possibly come out of the Epstein case uh, other than just documents. Yeah. You know, I've, we've talked about this, but I, you know, I, I really do wonder if um, the investigation in New York, the Southern district one that brought the charges against Epstein, the brought charges against Glenn Maxwell, um, if that's still ongoing, if they plan to bring charges against anyone else, like if that's perhaps the reason why there wasn't a press conference because of, there's still an ongoing investigation. Um, it's hard to understand why, It'd be taking so long. Um, so I, I just don't know. Um, another angle at this, though, is, of course, there's a number of civil lawsuits um, against J.P. Morgan and, and you know, the banks for, ha- for how they handle their relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. And I think through, through there, we're already seeing some of um, the mechanics of how Jeffrey Epstein, you know, used his connections, uh, you know, in power, how he kind of um, managed to Builds a good relationship with the um, head of private banking of J.P. Morgan at the time, who later became the um, head of uh, Barclays, if I'm correctly right, J- Jess Staley, and uh, and and kind of like how he maintained these connections in high finance. So there, there's just that angle, and I and I think probably in the near term we'll learn more about that as as those lawsuits continue to advance. And I'm looking forward to learning more about it. Uh, I know you are too. So, I mean, do you think we know most of the big names out there who've been kind of affiliated with him over the years? It seems like there are a lot of people who were in his orbit who he was a rich guy, he's a billionaire. He would seek out these relationships. I mean, it, it seems like these people are automatically tainted just because they hung out with him or knew him. 
Yeah, I, I do think, um, you know, at this point, any names of affiliates are known. Um, the degree of their, you know, the depth of their relationships is maybe a bit of a, of a, of a more, more question mark. But mm-hmm. it, I think in general, you know, like he, he and uh, Prince Andrew, for example, didn't make any much of a secret of their uh, relationship. And that obviously famously blew up. And there's the famous Virginia Jeffrey case. And there's the famous settlements that Prince Andrew brought um and you know as as i as i just said i think the the focus now um from civil lawsuits from victims is on is on uh these institutions like jp morgan which which um uh a jane doe victim and also the u.s virgin islands uh attorney general alleges like enabled um and facilitated jeffrey epstein's like tra- sex trafficking so i think that's kind of like where that um direction is now um i, I think another piece of this is the Epstein Compensation Program, right? There's old, there's a, I think around a hundred women uh, took money money from it, and then they had to, you know, say, well, we can't sue Jeffrey Epstein's estate, and we can't sue Glenn Maxwell. But aside from that, like you know, they can still like sue anyone else who you know they might allege uh, were they were sex trafficked to, and we haven't really, you know, we haven't really seen that um, any, any lawsuits like that. And you would you would I think I I would think that you know, we would be seeing more in in those terms if if there was more to find out. Um, Of course, we saw the Prince Andrew uh, lawsuit, as I just mentioned, but beyond that, uh, there hasn't been been much. So I think that's kind of, uh, that's how I see it anyway. Well, Jacob Shamsian, we will be keeping a close eye on this. I know I'll be looking forward to reading some of these transcripts when they are released, and and hopefully they'll be released at some point soon. Thanks again uh, for your time and your expertise, as always. Totally. Thanks for having me so much. And that's it for this edition of Law and Crime Sidebar Podcast. You can listen to and download Sidebar on Apple, Spotify, Google, and wherever else you get your podcasts. And of course, you can always watch it on Law and Crime's YouTube channel. I'm Anjanette Levy, and we will see you next time.